That's the one engine in the center of the five-engine cluster that is now cut off. You got four other engines. The you can't quadrant. use an eight minutes. Uh, you're looking good. How's the ride? Yes, it's fantastic, Charlie. Fantastic. Right. The next uh, operation is at uh, about another 45 seconds when the outboard engine's Kick cut off. And mark, level sense arm. Level sense arm. And We're right down the ground track at 8 minutes 30 seconds, 755 miles downrange, 98 miles high. After those outboard engines cut off, the second stage is jettisoned. And then the third stage and the payload. Velocity is 21,499 feet per second. Going to uh, orbit. That's speed he gave you. Taking a status for staging now. Translates at about 13,000 miles an hour. Roger, Paula, Ten, you're a go for staging. Staging is the separation of the stage. Mode four, Paula, Ten, mode four. Mode four. Roger. Roger. Stafford confirming the separation the that you saw on the animation. Has initiated on the S4B stage, the third stage. Generally, lots of stuff out the window at staging. We're catching up and passing it now. Okay. Okay. Right. We confirm that. Looking great here. You're looking beautiful. was a critical point, the ignition of the third stage engine, 1J2 engine, 225,000 pounds of thrust. It's a reignitable engine. 37 miles downrange, 102 miles high, and the velocity is 23,400 feet per second. That's about 16,000 miles per hour they're going now. 16,000 miles cut off for the Saturn uh, S4B stage, 11 minutes, 47 seconds. 4B cut off, uh, 11 plus 47. 11 plus 47. There, as you see there, uh, out over the Atlantic, they passed the Bermuda tracking station. They'll be picked up Downrange by the Canary Islands. Downrange 12 miles now at 10 minutes 44 seconds, 102 and a half miles high, the velocity 24,280 feet per second. It's about 16,500 miles an hour. They get up to 17,400 miles an hour for their Earth orbital yeah, speed. Houston at 11:10, you're looking good. Uh, as we show, the guidance is beautiful. Right. This is the third space trip for Stafford and for Young. The second space trip for Cerner. Predicted cutoff now 11 minutes 45 seconds. Cut off the third Seco. stage engine. Roger, Seco. Six. Roger. Stand by, Stan. Cut off of the engine. The main engine. Okay, uh, Houston, we show 102.6 by 101.1. Roger, one, we copy that. That's his orbital altitude. Our, uh, was 25, 565, minus 110 eight stop, and the 102.6. Right, we copy. Assertion. And Charlie, have them uh, take a look at our uh, evaporator. We're reading a high outlet temperature, and uh, we're all scale low on the steam pressure right now. Right, we agree. Stand by. A reading from there. Okay. Instruments, which uh, might indicate some minor problem. High evaporator temperature. I just what the significance of that would be uh, on the outlet of the evaporator would indicate that 
for us building up temperatures from within. We'd like you to, on the evaporator, we'd like you to close the primary back pressure valve and activate the secondary loop. Roger, understand. Close the primary uh, back pressure valve and activate the secondary loop. Right, just for a little while. We'll give you the numbers. And we'll have uh, Vanguard uh, LOS at 1532 in a minute gap, and we we'll see you over the Canaries at 1629. Uh, Roger, and we have closed the isolation valve on CMRCS ring one. Two is still open. Roger. They're talking there of a communications gap. Uh, they lose uh, contact uh, as they pass between the uh, Bermuda and the Canary Island yeah, tracking Houston, station. Yeah, Houston, in great shape. You're configured for orbit. Uh, we're all go. Uh, Roger, just looks beautiful. That was the capsule communicator, Charles Duke, saying... And, and uh, Houston, we confirm your orbit. The IU vector has you in a 103 by 100. Roger. Talking about the orbital altitudes in statute miles, that actually would come to around 115 miles uh, of, uh, in statute miles, rather than nautical miles. And it's right on the target, perhaps just a little bit high, but uh, not enough to cause any concern. The capsule communicator again, who said, uh, go, everything looks good, it was Charles Duke, and you heard Stafford say it was beautiful so far. They lose contact here for about a minute. Uh, until they come up over the Canary Island station on the far side of the Atlantic and their first pass around the Earth of the two that they will make before they go on the way toward the moon. It'll take them about uh, uh, 88 minutes to make their first orbit of the Earth. They'll be back over the Cape area here, in other words, 88 minutes after launch, which now was just 15 minutes ago. Uh, everything going well. They've got a little trouble with that evaporator, as you heard. Uh, to keep the uh, primary back pressure valve closed for about 15 minutes, and uh, and then we'll uh, be at standby. You got a beautiful example here of the combination, uh, the teamwork that is involved in one of these space flights. Every one of the systems, every one of the functions aboard that spacecraft, some 3,800 of them are monitored. And Houston at uh, GET of 30, uh, we'd like you to uh, put the primary back pressure valve back in auto and uh, deactivate the secondary loop. Roger, I understand you want, uh, at 30, you want to deactivate the secondary loop and go back to uh, auto on the... Uh on the uh, primary boiler. Hey, firm, Gene. Oh, Gene Cernan. Uh, we heard from him right at the first part of the launch, and now we hear from him again. He's a lunar module pilot, but he's also the engineer monitoring all the systems aboard the spacecraft, and uh, he's taking over that function. But this is giving you an idea of the We've teamwork. We've had LOS at the Vanguard. be about a minute gap between uh, Vanguard and the Canary Island station. Showing a liftoff time of 12.49.00.70 Eastern Daylight Time. Seven seconds late, isn't that terrible? Almost on precise moment. Seven tenths of a second. No, oh, that's. I should think Werner von Braun would be ashamed of himself. Seven tenths of a second late, getting this great beast and all that it had to do with it uh, off on time. Call control. We should be picking up the canaries any time now. We'll continue to stand by. The uh, talking about teamwork. We uh, do have AOS acquisition of signal at canaries. Now. Every part of this uh, machine is monitored, and the readouts of by computers and by telemetry. Uh, from the spacecraft and the engineers sitting there at their consoles in Houston uh, can almost fly that spacecraft themselves. With all their readouts, they can analyze a problem. Uh, and, uh, 10, uh, Houston, would you like for me to uh, review this uh, Rank 2 uh, heater check? I want to do that. How's things already down in the other room? Okay, uh, Tom, uh, we'd like for you to, uh, we've got a seven-step procedure here, and I'll read it up to you. So, uh, panel 8, uh, CB, uh, CM heaters, uh, 2 main B, close. CM RCS logic on. CM RCS heaters on. I want you to heat ring 2 for 15 minutes. 
and you can select position C5 on the systems test and monitor the ox uh, line temp. Well, now they're getting a little bit technical uh, for us, and that sort of uh, technical talk will go on throughout this orbit. Uh, there are tracking stations. You heard them mention the Vanguard. It's a tracking ship out in the middle of the Atlantic to bridge that gap between uh, Bermuda and the Canary Islands, and they got some communication through that. Uh, but now it is the monitoring of all the functions. That's the purpose of these two orbits around the Earth. Be sure that everything is functioning in the spacecraft. They'll be reading out a whole set of figures which will be absolutely meaningless to us uh, laymen and uh, getting reading back from the ground, confirming these figures, confirming that all instruments and all systems are working.